The United States' use of drones in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and other nations overseas has drawn much criticism for civilian deaths and a lack of accountability. But even less is known about the drones used within U.S. borders. The digital privacy advocate Electronic Frontier Foundation is trying to change that by suing the Department of Transportation for failing to disclose who is operating the drones domestically and how they are being used. FSRN's Alice Olstein reports from Washington. The Electronic Frontier Foundation submitted a Freedom of Information Act request in April, arguing that the public deserves to know more about the use of drones within the United States. When the FAA failed to release the information after several months, the Digital Privacy Advocacy Group filed a lawsuit that may force them to do so. The group says U.S. citizens need to be more informed as the use of this technology expands. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, the government agency charged with regulating the use of these unmanned aircraft, there are about 50 companies, universities, and government organizations developing and producing about 150 different types of drones in the U.S. alone. Such drones can be as big as a commercial aircraft or as small as a hummingbird, and can gather data using cameras, radar, and heat sensors. Drones are used by the Border Patrol to search for undocumented immigrants, and some local agencies have used them for everything from search and rescue operations to tracking natural disasters. The sheriff in Nelson County, North Dakota, has temporarily borrowed drones patrolling the northern border to nail cattle smugglers, and the Miami-Dade County Police purchased a drone with a federal grant. We could have used it a couple weeks ago. In fact, we had a guy we were chasing, so in a case like that, it could have been used. That's Dale Patrick with the Queen Anne's County Sheriff's Department. He says the FAA ran drone tests in the county last year and trained staff on how to use one. When the economy turns around, the department may incorporate the technology into their law enforcement toolbox. Civil liberties groups agree that there are many legitimate reasons to use drone technology, but Jay Stanley, a privacy expert with the ACLU, says there are no laws in place to prevent abuse. There are times when I think most people would say that it's you know, a, a, an unmanned aircraft could be a really good thing, whether there's a child lost in the wilderness and the aircraft can help search for them um, or what have you. But, you know, we want to be able to get the advantages of this technology without having to worry that somebody's looking at us and following us around every time we walk outside of our front door. Stanley says the FAA must regulate when, where, and why drones are used. Most other industrialized countries have privacy commissioners um, and in many countries, they have significant powers to enforce um, the society's privacy norms. And they have overarching privacy laws, which put into place you know, limits on the amount of surveillance that can be done. So it's really a wild west in this country when it comes to privacy. The use of domestic drones may expand much more rapidly in the years to come, as Congress moves towards finalizing a multi-year FAA reauthorization bill. The most recent version of the legislation calls on the FAA to accelerate the approval of drone use, expand the number of test sites, and draft new rules for both military and non-military deployment. The Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, a drone industry group, spent over $200,000 lobbying Congress in 2011 alone. And several drone conferences scheduled this year to promote the technology are expected to host federal and state agencies. Groups concerned with the unchecked expansion of drone use say an upcoming Supreme Court decision could set a legal precedent for their use and surveillance. In the coming months, the court will rule on whether police departments must get a warrant before using GPS technology to track the movements of a suspect. Stanley says the case raises some big questions about the constitutional right to privacy. Are we going to update our Constitution and our Fourth Amendment so that it remains relevant in the age of high technology, or is it going to become a dead letter, you know, applicable only to our lifestyles insofar as they match the lifestyles of 18th century founding fathers? Civil liberties groups like the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the ACLU say U.S. laws need to keep up with rapidly changing technology to avoid the dangers of becoming a surveillance state. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.